Hello everybody, I'm Rich Holder, welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this testing. Today's the day, I'm very excited. We've got the 2.2 liter Dodge and today it's going up on the dyno and it's gonna get running, minus the turbo. Richard, why aren't you starting with the turbo? That motor originally came with a turbo. Why wouldn't you run it with a turbo? I'm glad you asked. Almost time. Look at that. Reeves. Okay guys, I'm really excited. As you can see, I have the 2.2 liter turbo motor up on the dyno, finally mounted and kind of ready to go. Actually, it's not a 2.2 turbo motor because we don't have the turbo stuff on there right now. What I want to do is start out by running this thing naturally aspirated, and there's several reasons to do that. One, we want to go through a break in cycle naturally aspirated. Then I want to test the power output, not only, but also find out what kind of timing. How does this thing respond to air, fuel, and timing? And once I know how much timing it wants naturally aspirated, when I add the turbo, I'll have a better idea what we should do under boost. And this is very important because a lot of the testing is going to be run on pump gas. That's right. We're going to run boost on pump gas. A lot of the guys out there are running these things on either 91 if they were in California or 93 octane elsewhere in the United States. It's very important to know what optimum timing is on the naturally aspirated so we know how much timing we can get away with on pump gas. So we'll run this thing naturally aspirated, maybe even do some more testing. Right now I have it configured with a two-piece intake manifold and a stock naturally aspirated exhaust manifold. Obviously that's not an ideal combination. Those were just easy to bolt on, but since it is is naturally aspirated if we get through all of our like baseline testing and our break-in what I can do is run a few NA tests I can put the long tube header on there I've got three different intake manifolds I can run on there maybe I can advance and retard the cam timing I can do all kinds of stuff naturally aspirated before we switch over to boost so let's get this thing started find out what happens Okay guys, we've got the 2.2 up on the dyno. Before we even try to start it, what I want to do is find out if it has oil pressure. We got this, we're going to spin this, we're going to look at the gauge and see if we have oil pressure. Let's check it out. Yeah, I see it moving. It's moving. Yeah, we got oil coming out. Yeah, winning. Okay, as you guys saw, things did not go exactly as planned. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, I thought things were going great when we first put this thing together. It went together well. Once I got the adapter for the bell housing from Reeves, everything worked perfect. Although, as a little side note, I first tried to install that many, many times and align this thing on a small block Chevy LS bell housing. And after a quick call to Reeves, he said, you know, that doesn't go on a Chevy bell housing. It actually, it's actually designed to adapt the 2.2 over to a Dodge bell housing. And then once I put the Dodge bell housing on, it went on, boom, slapped right on, just like it should. I mean, it was machined perfectly and adapted. And it goes on the dyno. <laughs> this thing had perfect oil pressure, as you saw. All we did was spin the oil pump, fill full of oil, spin the oil pump, had oil pressure right away. Oil was everywhere, just like you want it to be, and the pressure was very, very high, which was great. This thing fired up like on the first key. When we hooked up the fuel system, there were no leaks. We put our 80-pound injectors in there thinking, hey, maybe later on we're going to run boost, so we need enough fuel. Everything worked out great. When we first adjusted the timing, we changed the timing at idle. We were changing it in the software because, as you know, looking with our distributor, the, our distributor mod, our Super Richie distributor mod, we were able to adapt a Holly HP management system on this so that I could run it on the engine dyno and do all of the tuning. <laughs> Famous last words, but every time we tried to go and run RPM and or load with this thing, it would not allow us to control the timing. We could, at wide open throttle, manually adjust the timing and kind of get what we want, but there was no combination that we tried 
that, that would give us full control at wide open throttle at every RPM and load range. So we're gonna have to work on that and figure that out. We spent a lot of time on it, but we weren't able to come up with it. The other thing that concerns me is this thing has some really, really weird power curves. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now. You guys can take a look and maybe make a comment. Let me know, what do you guys think? What is this, what is this big VTEC hump that happens at the top of the rev range? Okay guys, let's jump right in. This is our 2.2 liter Dodge up on the dyno. We had, it came from a Dodge 600. It was originally a 1984 turbo version where the turbo was not controlled by the computer. It was rated in the 142 to 146 horsepower from the factory with seven pounds of boost. What I did to run it up on the dyno is we took the turbo off, we ran it absolutely aspirated and as it turned out, it's a very good thing that we did because we had some trouble with the timing. But we configured this thing, we basically just rebuilt it and put it back together stock. It's got a stock head and cam and, and stock short block. It's low compression for the turbo. And what I did to run it on the engine dyno, we put a two-piece intake manifold on it from the later turbo version. And we ran it with a naturally aspirated cast iron exhaust manifold and a two and a half inch set of tubing or section of tubing that we had laying around. We used the O2 sensor provision in the factory exhaust manifold. We hooked up a Holly HP management system to this and did not run it with a factory computer. And we also use an LS harness. You might be asking yourself, Richard, how did you use an LS harness? Well, look at the mods that I made to the distributor. What we did was we mounted the 24X crank sensor on the factory distributor. You can see I had to slot the distributor. I had to make a little bracket, make the mount, get the get the sensor close enough. We had it about 55 thousandths away from the trigger wheel. And using the LS harness, uh, Ish was able to configure the Holly HP. And we also set this thing up, with, we had a one pulse per fire. We also set this thing up with 80 pound injectors and I chose those so that later on, after we add the turbo and start adding the intercooler and turning the boost up and adding the 85, that we have enough room to grow basically. And so these 80 pound injectors work very well. But we set this thing up, again, it was the early turbo motor, but we were running it naturally aspirated, hooked it up with a Holly HP management system, and this is what it did when we ran. You saw that we pre-oiled it and did all the stuff. It sounded, it sounded good, ran good. We originally configured it with 25 degrees of timing. The way that we do that is we go in and set the reference angle. We have a timing light. We dial in 25 degrees of timing. We make sure that it's showing 25 degrees of timing. We make a change. We make sure that it changes. And then we correlate that. And we did exactly that. And it worked perfect. You know, after, after our first run, this thing actually did pretty well. It made 109 horsepower and peak torque was over 130 foot pounds that may have been a, a little bit of an anomaly on the load and normally the number is a little bit higher but anyway it was doing kind of what i expected given the fact that it's a stock 84 low compression turbo motor run naturally aspirated here's where things got weird so we make another run we're gonna rev it out a little higher you know we're revving it out to you know closer to 6,000 rpm and it did this <laughs> this is what i don't understand um, we have this weird, like big rise in power and then a fall off. I, I let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is this a, a, a valve float issue? Is this, is this the NA motor liking that's that two piece intake manifold? We don't really know what's going on here, but we had, we ran into another problem too. As we read this thing out and we were watching the timing, this thing is running about 55 degrees of total ignition timing out at, out at, past about 4,000 RPM. I have no idea why the thing didn't hurt itself, but we were running 91 octane, it is low compression, and we we're running it very cold. But we we could eventually adjust the distributor manually and get the timing that we wanted. But the thing that I don't understand is 
we're, we're going to fix this problem, but I don't understand what that big jump in power is. So let me know in the comments what you guys think it is, because this showed up again and again. We ran this thing manually adjusting the distributor to, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these other two here. We'll go get rid of four and 10. Here are two runs that we made where we adjusted the timing manually by turning the distributor. So we ran one at 24 degrees and we ran one at 30 degrees and the 30 degree one made more power, but it has this weird spiky climb in power. And the interesting thing is that on these runs, it did it earlier than it did previously. No change in air fuel and no change. Well, there is a change in timing here. So I don't, I don't understand why that there's this change, uh, but we will figure all this out. We're going to put it back together. We think it's the distributor. We think it's the trigger wheel and the distributor. We think that the teeth are too wide, that basically when this thing spins too fast, that it's just kind of seeing a solid trigger. So we're going to cut most of those out because we're only using either the leading or trailing edge of the, of the, trigger wheel anyway. So we're cut most of it out. It'll have big openings. It should be able to distinguish that a lot better. If that's the problem, that should solve it. If not, we'll figure something out. But for right now, we have to take the motor off and then start over.